Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Karen Roberts for the USA Today Network. Today we're in Dr. Olivia Hooker's home, and she is one of the people featured in this Aging Gracefully book. She tells us about her life and what it's like to be 102 years young. Uh, you know, how do you stay so positive? Because I'm sure that had something to do with your longevity. Well, that's my parents who always tried to express the notion you look forward and don't believe that you can't succeed. And she, they kept pounding that into us. There are five children in our family, and uh, I think it was their stressing, look forward, we'll find another way, you know, to do things. <laughs> so it kept you from becoming discouraged because they were always saying, look forward, Whatever's been done once can be done again. <laughs> and I'm reading about, you know, the Tulsa, you know, massacre, what you call, mm -hmm. and just uh, the history that's just untold in a lot of pe uh, places. What do you think young people have to know about, you know, some of the strife? And I think they need to know that you have to watch your back. And as they say, trust few. <laughs> And always check uh, the veracity of what people tell you, because there are people who will not tell you the straight truth, you know. It was years before they finally came out with a report from the Assembly of Oklahoma that showed that we were the victims, we were not the perpetrators. But for years, they had even denied that they used airplanes. But all of us experienced and saw the airplanes. We, we thought they belonged to the militia, but actually they had borrowed the airplanes from farmers who dusted the crops. And uh, so those airplanes were not militia airplanes, but we thought they were. And they were hailing bullets down, and they deputized all the marauders, the terrible people, they made them deputies to the militia, and that gave them the right to do anything they wanted to do. It makes you wonder how people even consider that one human is less worthy than another human, but... Uh, there were many, many of them that just felt that way. And they were furious when they came in our house, you know, just stormed in. And my mother was cooking instead of running, you know. And they felt that was just the wrong thing. So they took the food off the stove and took it outdoors and dumped it in the mud. Then they came back and took her nice flaky biscuits out of the oven, took them out and dumped them in the dirt. And we're hiding under the table where she had put us, and we could see all this. Well, it didn't astonish my older sister and brother because they knew about things. But you see, I was one of these starry-eyed children who went to a school that impressed us with life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And I believed it. I didn't know it didn't pertain to me. I was absolutely astonished. So I said to my mother, how can it be hailing when the sun is out bright? She said, that's not hail. And she took me to show me through the Venetian blinds that that was a machine gun. And it was not hail, it was bullets. And then when she said to me, that means your country is shooting at you. Well, I hadn't even thought about joining the service, but I belonged to a sorority that was, was really campaigning for the Navy to take in black women. And after our campaign, and they finally, well, 
of Secretary Forrestal became secretary, and he said, let them in. And uh, I waited, and I read the paper to see who joined. Nobody did. So I thought, well, maybe if I throw my hat in the ring and it works, maybe someone else will be encouraged to come. So I put my name in. The first, I got a letter back saying there were complications. So I thought, well, I'll do the papers over, and I set them up, came back, there's complications. They didn't tell me what the complications were. It was 50 years before I found out what the complications were. They were planning to have a separate group. They weren't planning to have you integrated in the race. Secretary Forrestal got in there, and he he wrote me a letter and said, you could start at the bottom and work your way up because we're not taking college graduates into officers' training anymore. And uh, be glad to have you, but, you know, you start at the bottom and work up. And I thought, well, all right, maybe I'd try that because uh, I thought, you can't fight for a right, and then when it's granted, you can't turn it down, you know. It makes you look like a hypocrite. And so I thought, okay, I'll be the example. I'll try. Well, what should people do, people that are, you know, concerned about the country and the future? I thought it was good for the women to have a march and keep on marching, and if I could join them, I'd be right there with them and let them know we don't have to accept this with pleasure. Uh, We have to keep our country strong.